Well, two Sundays ago, I reminded you of one of the most important questions that was originally asked by our Lord and Savior to his disciples. And that question is stated in this manner. Who do men say that I am? And then he also said, but who do you say that I am? What answer will we give when confronted with the same question? And I told you that I prefer to answer the, that question with the principal assertion of the New Testament. Ano ba yung principal assertion ng bagong tipan patungkol kay Jesus? Jesus is the Savior of sinners. And there are two major points I decided to show to you that the New Testament assertion concerning Jesus is indeed He is the Savior of sinners. Tinignan natin two Sundays ago yung una, the prophetic utterance concerning the birth of Jesus. Nakita natin na yung mga tao na or even yung angelic being that was involved in terms of the birth of Jesus Christ were all pointing very clearly to one thing na itong baby na ipapanganak ay walang iba kung hindi the Savior of sinners. At kahit anong ipinanganak siya, sinabi ng isang Old Testament saint nung dinala si Jesus sa templo, that He is indeed yung inihintay niya na Messiah, the Savior of sinners. This morning, we will consider the second major point, which is the purposeful ministry conducted by Jesus Christ. Marami pong pwedeng i-present at doon clearly makikita natin ito yung pinakamarami that will point, that will directly state that Jesus Christ is indeed the Savior of sinners. Ngunit ang pinili ko lamang isang bahagi which is directly the testimony of Jesus surprisingly binasa nyo kahapon kung sinusundan nyo yung reading natin doon sa Luke chapter 4. At bago natin buksan itong muli, tayo ay humiling ng pagpapala sa ating dakilang Diyos. Aming Ama, sa inyong makapangyarihang pagkilos sa buhay ng tao, kami ay humihingi na mabahagiinan mo ng kahit konting kapangyarihan mo upang maging malinaw ang kaunawaan ng bawat isang naparito at maunawaan nila ang patotoo na ipinagkakalob pa ulit-ulit ng bagong tipan at higit sa lahat ang aming Panginoong Hesus nang simulan niya ang kanyang public ministry that He is indeed the Savior of sinners. At nawa ang bawat isa ay mag-profit from this meditation either by a new life coming from Him or karamihan sa amin that are in Christ will be refreshed again of what it means for the Lord Jesus to be the Savior of sinners. So that we will not be enticed again by this world, 
by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, to live as if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which we profess, is not the Savior of sinners, because we are always overcome by sin. Be pleased, Lord, to hear our prayers. In His name, Amen. So let us begin by looking at the very point na si Yesu Cristo started His ministry through the account of Luke. At sa account ni Luke, ito ay nandoon sa chapter 4 where He recounts to us yung pasimulang ministeryo publicly ni Jesus and where the Lord Himself surprisingly Kasi hindi ito madalas ginagawa ni Jesus. Siya mismo nirebuild niya yung kanyang sarili doon sa kanyang mga kababayan na kung saan siya matagal na nanatili doon po sa Nazareth. And there the Lord Jesus Christ revealed exactly what later became to be the principal assertion of the New Testament sa mga testimony ng mga naligtas, sa mga teachings ng mga apostol, sa teaching ni Paul, sa teaching ni Peter, even the writer of the Hebrews, ay yun ang dinala ng buong bagong tipan. At yun ang ating interes sa umagang ito. Kaya nga buksan natin muli ang ating Biblia at sundan po ninyo ang pagbasa mula sa verse 14 hanggang sa verse 21. And after that, we will be asking some relevant question concerning the passage na babasahin natin. Beginning verse 14, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of Him went out through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So, ano ba yung keynote na passage? Sa Old Testament. Sa sinagog kasi, nagsisimula ang kanilang gathering with many prayers. And after the many prayers that is being offered, tumatawag sila ng isa which is they consider na mature to read from the law and the prophets. So magbabasa sila ng portion muna somewhere sa law, sa Torah, and then, sa prophet. So, doon sa prophet, si Jesus, yung natasan. At ibinigay sa kanya, yung aklat. What passage in the Old Testament was read by Jesus? It is found in Isaiah chapter 61. Beginning verse 1, up to verse 2, yung unang bahagi ng verse 2. Doon nakasulat ay ganito, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me 
Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So mahalaga na maunawaan natin ano yung kaunawaan ng mga Hudyo dito sa passage na to. Para sa kanila, it is very simple. It is about the prophecy that the be- promised Messiah will come on a mission of blessing and vengeance. Kaya nga, pag binasa nyo yung verses 1 to 11, kitang-kita nyo that His mission is of blessing and vengeance. Now, mahalaga ito dahil you have to remember that Isaiah here is giving this message to Israelites who will soon be facing captivity in Babylon. Itong mensahe na ito, binanggit niya kasi malapit na silang parusahan ng Panginoon by bringing them in exile sa Babylon ng mahabang taon. ba alam ninyo, 70 years. And so this message is designed to give at least hope to these people or to other people who may read it. Siguro marami namang ipapanganak nung time na yon. And it must have been a tremendous comfort to the Jew to know na yung captivity nila, bagamat magiging mahaba, there will be a glorious reward awaiting them one day. And this reward will be fulfilled through the promise Messiah. So pagdating po sa promise Messiah na ito, there are two things that the verse in Isaiah is saying, which Jesus quoted, dito po sa verse na ito, sinasabi ni Isaiah that the one is speaking is the anointed one who bears the Spirit of God. Siya yung anointed ones. Kasi, babalikan nyo, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. So, malinaw na malinaw, kung sino man itong nagsasabi na ito, is the anointed one who bears the Spirit of God. So, ano bang ibig sabihin nung anointed one? Yung salita pong ito, sabi nga sa Webster, kung babasahin nyo, dictionar, common dictionary, Messiah is the title, sabi ni Webster, given to the promised deliverer of the Jewish nation prophesied in the Hebrew Bible. The word Messiah is derived from the Hebrew word Mashiach. Kaya nga, may mga grupo po ng mga nagkiklaim na Christian ngayon, narinig ko sa wife ko yung nagkikwento siya. For whatever reason, pagka nice nilang tukuyin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, ginagamit nila yon Parating, bakit? Sabi ko, ginagamit nila yung Hebrew. ba Yeshua Mashia. Mashua. No? So, madalas, yung Mashua. Ibig sabihin, the anointed one. Jesus, the anointed one. So, kung nagsasalita sila, hindi ko alam bakit. Pinili nila, kahit hindi naman sila Hebrew, no? bakit sila sasabihin nila Mashua, ay, I mean, Yeshua, Yeshua, Mashua. ba? Because they are using that Samantalang tayo, it corresponds with the simple title, Christ, or Jesus Christ. Para sa atin, or Christos, 
which means the anointed one. At yan po ay ginagamit sa Bible. Halimbawa si Peter, di ba? Yung kapat si Andrew, yung kapatid niya. Anong sabi niya kay Peter? We have found the Messiah. When you translate it, the Christ in John 1:41. O yung sa yung Samaritan woman at the well, umaalala ninyo. I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, John 4:25. So when you encounter the title Christ in the New Testament, you are really encountering the teaching in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah, the Anointed One. Kaya nga, ang sinabi dyan, the one is speaking, is the Anointed One who bears the Spirit of God. Kaya nga, kung ito yung ikiklaim ni Jesus, nakita ninyo, uh, kailan na-anoint si Christ ng Spirit. iba. Magtutugma na magtutugma ito sa lumang tipan. The second, sinabi dyan, the one is speaking is not merely the anointed one who bears the Spirit of God, but the one is speaking will be God's servant who will bring about divine deliverance that Israel was hoping for. Diba? Kaya nga binanggit doon sa binasa natin na the anointed one will preach the gospel to the poor. He was sent to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Usually, it is called the servant of the Lord. Na unang ginamit ni Isaiah sa chapter 42 ng kanyang Akla. At dito lumalabas yung na-encounter natin, He is not, the Messiah is not merely the anointed one, the Messiah is the expected one. So, dalawa yan. Messiah, the anointed one. Second, the Messiah, the expected one. Yung anticipation ng mga Hudyo for national deliverance through a man anointed by God. Yan po ang tema parati ng Judaism through the ages. Kaya nga, dun sa 12th article ng Orthodox Jewish Creed, ganito po yung sinasabi, I believe with a perfect faith in the coming of the Messiah. And though he tarry, yet will I wait daily for his coming. Kaya nga po, hanggang ngayon, dahil hindi nila tinanggap na si Jesus yung Messiah, nagihintay sila hanggang ngayon. At sinasabi, nire-recite nila yan. Though he tarry, yet will I wait daily for his coming. Kaya nga mapupunan nyo, doon sa mga binabasa natin, di ba ngayon sinusunda ang pagbasa natin eh, yung sunod-sunod as it appears to the Bible. Tapos na tayo sa Matthew, sa Mark, we're currently in the book of Luke. So maging observant kayo no, na yung mga encounter ng mga Hudyo na very sensitive doon sa Messiah, the expected one, ang una nilang Tinanong, di ba dun, as recorded by Matthew and even Luke, eh, si John the Baptist, tinatanong niya na, Are you the expected one? Iniisip nila kung si Jesus yung Messiah, the anointed one, the deliverer. Paulit-ulit po yun because yeah, the Messiah is not merely the anointed one. He is the expected one. So, yan po yung keynote 
ni Jesus na verse sa Old Testament. Sa sinagog, pag yung piniling magbasa noon, di ba, hinand out sa kanya. Yung mabasahin. Isaiah, tapos dito na punta. Expected, yung magbabasa na yan, ipapaliwanag niya. Yung recorder ni Luke, napaka-iksi. Pero ang tingin ko, personally, pinaliwanag niya yon. And then sa dulo, sinabi niya, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, yan yung exposition niya. Whatever, kung meron pa siyang sinabi, hindi natin alam. But, kumbaga sa ano, yung thesis niya is, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Well, itong lines from Isaiah, very striking because in them, the voice of the one written about is now being heard in the midst of God's people. Ito very striking, yun. Tagal na panahon, ito yung sinabi. Tapos in their hearing, maririnig mo, the one is spoken about is the one speaking now. Kaya sabi niya, today, today, this scripture is fulfilled or has been fulfilled in your hearing. Remember, yung scripture sa New Testament only refers to the Old Testament scripture because it is all they had written down at this time. So, Jesus, ano nangyayari dito? Jesus is referring specifically to these verses which his hearers understood as the prophecy of the Messiah. Malinaw yon sa mga kausap niya. Kasi mga Hudyo yung kausap niya. At meron nga silang expectation. Daladala nila yan. Hinihintay nila yan. And if they are very religious, they, yung sinasabi nilang daily. Parang tayo ngayon, Jesus will return again. Ang question, are you expecting? Are you waiting? We also say, though he tarry long, yet as long as I live as a Christian, I will refresh my mind that Jesus promised he will return again. So, ganyan na ganyan yung nangyayari. And they know, when Jesus Christ made that claim, he was claiming it through his own person, itong state, itong Isaiah, that talks about the Messiah, that Jesus Christ is claiming it to his own person. He was declaring to all the Jews in the synagogue that he was the long expected anointed one, the deliverer, the Messiah, the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. So can you imagine yourself? Nandun ka sa sinagog na yun, nung araw na yun, and listening to the one read from Isaiah the prophecy, the one reading, the one explaining, is the one that is being prophesied. Diba? Kaya, may dating yan sa mga nakikinig sa kanya. And what was the people's response to this statement? In Luke 4 verse 22, So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? 
isn't it not Joseph's son? Parang may ganyan ding tono sinulat ni Mark sa Mark chapter 6. Beginning verse 2, sabi ni Mark, And when the Sabbath had come, he, referring to Jesus, began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished. Saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hand? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not these sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Ito naman eh, in assessing the kind of miracles na nakita nila. Sabi nila, hindi ito basta-basta magagawa ng sino man. This must be from God. Pero parang nat- kinatitisuran nila yung background ni Jesus. Diba? Yun po yung na-encounter natin na reply. What were the residents of Nazareth saying? Diba? Sabi ng Pasay, so all bore witness to him. Ibig po sabihin nun, in simple English, all were speaking well of Him. Sabi ko, ba't pinapahirap ng Bible? Kasi all bore, parang, ano kaya ang ibig sabihin? Pero kung sabihin ko sa inyo, ano ba madali nyo maintindihan? All bore witness to Him, or all were speaking well of Him. They were repeatedly doing this, bearing witness, speaking well of Him. See, in perfect tense sa Greek. Eh. They did not at first deny na itong nagsalita na to, eh, masamang tao. Hindi. They said, this doctrine was pleasing. He himself is very comforting. They were ready to accept it. So far, so good. And dinugtunong ng panilok. And marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Kaya yeah, ang suspecha ko, nagpaliwanag si Jesus eh. Because of this statement. It means, you marvel means to wonder. To be struck with admiration. Eh kung yun lang short yung sinabi niya, parang, parang mo i-admire, di ba? Although, meron na silang alam patungkol kay Jesus. Kaya nga siya yung napili. And then, yung salita pang gracious. Grabe nga yung terminology description ni Lucas. Eh. And marveled at the gracious words. No? The caris. No? In the present context, kasi alam natin, caris means undeserved favor from God. But in the present context, the meaning is graciousness or attractiveness. The way Jesus Christ spoke was, they realized it was very attractive. They, it's very graciously done. Eh, kung mag-refer lang ako doon, parang ang exit naman. Na makuha mo yun. So, Sabi nga ni Robertson, a Greek scholar, commenting on these gracious words ni Jesus, sabi niya, the genitive case here means that the words that came out of the mouth of Jesus is a steady stream, kasi present tense, is a steady stream marked by fascination and charm. They were winning words as the context makes plain, though they were also gracious in the Pauline sense of grace. Because si Paul may begin to refer about grace, even commanding us to speak you know, with grace to each other. Pero, 
surprisingly, very surprisingly magsulat si Luke, meron siyang itinugtong. Ano yung itinugtong niya? And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Is this not Joseph's son? So, here is a man named Jesus. Binasa yung passage that the Jews knows very much. In fact, religious Jews are awaiting for the coming of the Messiah, the Savior, their Savior, the Savior of sinners, the one who will deliver them from everything. And, dahil may alam na silang ginagawa ni Jesus, katulad nung description ni Mark, Diba? Yung mga miracle. Nagpapatotoo na hindi to ordinary yung tao. At dito, magamat nung pinapaliwanag niya yung scriptures, they were almost persuaded. Sabi ni Luca, there is something that deter them totally from embracing Jesus. Merong umaawat, bagamat hikayat na hikayat na sila, na totally i-embrace si Jesus. Ano yun? Ang ginagawa po dito ni Lucas nung dinugtong niya yun, he is exposing the real attitude of the people na nandun sa sinagog. Bagamat parang ganoon, pero sabi ni Jan, meron silang attitude. And this attitude became a barrier for them to fully accept Jesus as their Savior, their Messiah, the one who will deliver them personally and nationally. Kasi ang thinking nila parate ganun, yung kabuuan ng Israel. One writer draws an interesting and reasonable conclusion based on this question. Sabi niya, despite being so um, impressed by Jesus' remark that they marveled, they resolved that the situation with the accusation that this is a carpenter's son. In other words, someone with this common background cannot be who claim cannot be who he claims to be. Di naman siya nag-aaral sa paaralan ng mga pariseyo, ng mga eskriba. No? Pag tinignan mo yung estado ng buhay nila, mababa ang tingin sa carpenter. So, nung panahon nila, di ba? Tapos yung lugar nila, Nazareth. Di ba yung mga Jungay? What good will come from Nazareth? No? Diba? Parang sinabi mo, what good will come from Quiapo? Kung batang Quiapo ka, yung bagong palabas na pinopromote, kung saan-saan mo makita, kung kayo alam niyo po, anong time ko pag sinabi mong batang Quiapo? <laughs> Hindi mga good po yun. <laughs> Parang batang bangkosay. <laughs> Magkakamot kasi delyo yun. <laughs> So, parang ganun, may connotation. And then, yun yung ano, kitang-kita na nila sa miracles, kitang, kasi bago ito, di ba, yung temptation ni Jesus. E sa narration ni Mark, may mga nangyari pang miracles eh. Bago ito eh. Yung pagpunta niya sa Nazareth eh. At dahil dito, bagamat parang malinaw na malinaw nasa kanila, Nagdalawang isip sila. Kasi meron silang ganong attitude. It really amounts to an objection. The local Converten son from Nazareth becoming our Lord, our Savior, Purong hindi nila kayang tanggapin. 
Sabi nga ni Robertson again, quoting from him, Witness and wonder gave way to bewilderment as they began to explain to themselves the situation. The puzzle of the people was due to their previous knowledge of Jesus as the carpenter. For him now to appear as the Messiah, as the Savior of sinners in Nazareth where he had lived and labored as a carpenter, was impossible to credit such. Kung makasaan na yun, nahihimasmasan sila nung nag So the mood of wonder, the mood of praise, quickly turned to an objection. Pag binasa nyo, it even turned to hostility. They wanted to harm Jesus. Grabe, yung shift. A rapid and erratical transformation of emotion suddenly took place. Yung maalala mo lang eh, hindi pagorito lang yan. Marpinter lang yan. Kita natin ano. But the Bible says, the growth of Jesus Christ. Kahit walang sinasabi yung script, there is a summary sa Luke. Kaya siguro sinamarize ni, ni Lucas sa kung maalala nyo yung reading natin sa Luke 2, thinking about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke 2, 51-52. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. May nakita ba sila? Maling ginawa ni Jesus sa kanyang paglaki. And yet, di nila maisip, di lang nila matanggap na isa sa mga kababayan nila. And that's happening. Di ba? Eh, mabuti nga kayo, mabait kayo. No? Na congregation. Ano, si Ranji, magiging pastor natin? Tatuwagin ko siyang pastor. Eh, musmus lang dito yung bago yan eh. Gusgusin lang yan na kung sino. Or you can say so many things. It's happening. Di ba? The very same people may, suddenly, when one is elevated, you may hear some bad comments. Eh, ano lang yan eh. Ba't naman natin gagawin ganyan yan? Sobra naman yata tayo. O mangmang ba tayo? O maraming sasabihin. Eh, buti na lang, top na chair to dun sa school namin. Sa pag-attend, hindi uma-absent. Oh, you know, ganun po yung nangyayari, at yan din ang nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran sa kasalukuyan. ba? Diba? They are amazed at what Jesus is saying. They were amazed. Eh, yung ibang professing Christian naman, tuwan-tuwa sila. Na si Jesus ay Savior. Pag in naman ni Jesus, pasalamat sila ng sobra kay Jesus. Pero, sa mga professing Christian, pag in na ni Jesus, yung Lordship niya, lana. Parang bad boy na si Jesus. Sobra naman si Jesus. Masyadong demanding. Ibig mo bang sabihin, as a Christian, hindi ako pwedeng mag-court ng hindi Christian? Hindi naman siguro ganun. Sobra naman. No? Mali siguro understanding niya. So when Jesus Christ assert His Lordship over whom to marry, when Jesus Christ assert that I want to see you on the Lord's day, and I want you to honor the Lord's day. Sobra naman yan. Baka lumagpas tayo sa langit. Kung whole day tayong mag-worship kay Jesus. And yet, that person may be claiming, pag tinanong mo, ano ba priority mo sa buhay mo? God first. God first. No? Pero pag ina-assert na ni Jesus, akin yung day na yan. O kaya kung nandun ka sa lumang tipan, sinabi ni Jesus, 
No? Iniisip mo yung giving, bigla nagsalita yung master mo. The tent belongs to me. I'm not asking anything from you. But I just want to remind you that the tent of any provisions I gave to you belongs to me. Ngayon, kung gusto mo magbigay ng free will offering, sacrificial offering, kung whatever, you're free. But what is mine is mine. Diba? Si Jesus, tinanong din yan eh. Yung sa tax, diba? Kaya nga kinuha niya yung ano. Alam ba naka-inscribe dyan? Give to Caesar what belongs to him. So ganun din tayo. What belongs to God? We must give it to Him. We have not given anything yet because it belongs to Him. Now, but Jesus is already happy. Kaya nga ako nag-wonder ako bakit pag narinig yung type, mag-away mga Kristiyano. Wala nga hinihingi. Yan lang sinabi ni Jesus. Yung happy na si Jesus doon. Di okay. Ay, mas magaling. Wala na ako. Hindi na ako mag-free will offering or they conspire or kung ano pa mang idagdag nitong church. Kuno sa iyo. Kung magiging benevolent ka. Pero ang, alam niyo ba ang Jew, they are happy with their ang total nilang binibigay a religious Jews 27 to 32%. Nang lahat ng kinikita nila nung time na 'yon. Hindi sila nag-complain doon. Eh, kasi yung tent nga hindi nila sa Panginoon yun eh. Pero pag tinotal mo, meron silang daily sacrifices, mga ganito kung ano-ano. Sabi nga, buti na lang. New Testament ako. <laughs> hindi 28%. Parang nga mabigat, ano? Pag salit mo ng bulsa, sigurado, butas ang bulsa ko. Paano ako maglasada niya? <laughs> oh. So, if you don't understand, pero, dapat hindi rin ganon. More than that, when you think about He is the promised Messiah. He is the one who will save me from my sinfulness. Parang sinabi nga eh. Kasi, mga tao, hindi nila iniisip yung sinfulness kasi mahilig sila when you think of the law. Hindi masyadong in life stress ni Raji, he stress ko. They are only stressing no yung second part ng law. Kaya ang tingin nila, hindi naman sila martyr eh. Hindi man sila magnanakaw, nagtatrabaho. Wala ka tinatapakang tao. Erase mo yung the first part of the law, ang tinatapakan mo, Diyos. Yan ang problema. Maaring dito sa mundo na ito, mabuti kang tao. Masipag ka, kumikita ka ng marangal, hindi mo dinadaya yung iba, gracious ka sa mga employee mo, gracious ka sa parents mo, gracious ka sa mga mahihirap na nakikita mo. Kaya hindi naisip ng mga tao eh. Kaya ako hindi ko sila mahilig dalhin kung lo pag-uusapan. Sa second part, doon ako sa first part. Di ba yung mga tao, they take the name of God in vain. Maraming beses kung saan-saan ginagamit yung pangalan ng Panginoon. Do they honor the Sabbath day? Noong time na yun. Tayo, do you honor the Lord's day? Di ba, do you love God with all your heart? So doon, sa first part. Kasi pag parati lang naiisip nila, isek, hindi naman ako nanakaw, hindi naman ako ganito. Hindi ko naman pinag-iimbutan kung ano man yung, kung asawa, mas maganda naman yung asawa ko kaysa sa asawa ng kapitbahay ko, ba't ko pag-imbutan yan? O yung property, mas maganda naman bahay ko, mas maganda kotse ko, di ba? Lusot ka eh, parang lusot ka eh. Pero may hirapan ka lumusot sa first part of the law. Hindi ka lulusot dun basta-basta. That's why, doon mo lang makikita. Why? Kasi dito ang nakikita mo, kapwa mo. Mas mabuti ako sa kapwa ko. Kaya nila iniis, iniiwasan yung first part eh. Kasi doon sa first part, ikaw at ang Diyos lang. Walang iba. Ba? 
di ba? Kaya ayaw nila pag-usapan yun. Ang pag-uusapan nila, ito, yun sa tao-tao lang. Hindi ako gumagawa ng ganyan. Hindi ako gumagawa ng masama. Ilang beses niya maririnig. Kaya ang tingin niya, hindi naman talaga siya makasalanan. Ba't siya parurusahan ng Diyos? Mabait siya sa kanyang kapwa. Paano sa Panginoon? Hindi mo iniisip kung binabastos mo ang Panginoon. Di ba? Mga tao, hindi nila alam. Tinatapakan nila ang Diyos. At inaasahan nila, i-bless sila ng Diyos. Dahil sa kanilang kapwa-tao, parang ano yan eh. Mas mahal mo yung hayop. Di ba? Pag yung hayop mo, sinakta ng ibang tao, pakukulong mo. Gagamitin mo yung batas. Pero pag i-abort, okay lang. You see how silly people have become? Sabi nga, without God, you will become a fool. Kuripot, nagkagalit sa nanlilimos, pero doon sa maliit niyang hayo, no? Gagastos! Kahit maliit lang ang sweldo. Pero pag may kumatok, nangingi ng konti, gusgusin talagang, bukang hindi pa gutom, ay bukang hindi pa, hindi pa kumain, hindi man lang abutan kahit konti, di ba? Parang mas sarado yung puso natin. Kasi sumasama nga tayo sa mundo. Mga negosyante, gawin natin pet itong mga to. Maghintay kayo, pag naging pet ang baboy, bawal na kumain niya, bawal kumatay niya. Di ba yung kasabihin eh, you're harsh, you're cruel to animals. No? Anong animal sinasabi? No? Sa aso lang, sa pusa, cruel ka. Eh, yung ipis, sinumpit mo na, tatapak-tapakan mo pa. Di ba cruelty yung pagpatay sa ipis? Cruelty is just the same. Oh, may daga. Di ba? Naipit na nga, ilut. Sa trap mo, buhay pa. Lulubog, lulunuri mo pa. Oh. Hindi yan cruelty. Saan ba pwedeng maging cruel lang? Doon sa diniklara ng tao na pet ito. Yung iba nalilito. Yung rabbit ngayon kinakain. Di ba pet yan? Because men are declaring something and they got, because they have no God. It won't harm anyone. So you abort, karapatan ko yan, karapatan ko yan. We all talk about ourselves. Kung tayo tayo lang talaga, okay lang. So, declare natin. Paano ko yung Kunyari sa, sa India, di ba, yung baka? Kahit na butot balat na sila, mamamatay yung anak nila, hindi nila papatayin yung baka. In fact, eh, yung ihi nun, iniinom nila eh. Kasi whatever powers, whatever sacredness that there is in the cow, magbasa kayo. Binasa ko yan eh. Ba't nila sinasambasambay yung mga ganyan? At anong ginagawa nila? Will they are willing to drink it? Ako, okay na sa akin yung tinuturo niya, yung moral law, remain. Makakabuti kayo, pero inumin ko yung hihinom. Baka. Ay, hindi ko yung baka. Hindi ko siya sasambahin. Ba't ko siya sasambahin? But people can. Because without God, the Bible remains to say, you become fool. Tatalinong tao, ganyan gagawin. PhD ka, ganyan isip mo. Diba? Oh. Eh ngayon, ang laking, ano yung isang malaking problema ng marami ngayon? Diba? Yung mga nagpa-change ng ano? Namumoblema sila ngayon. Kasi isa-isa silang namamatay. Very dangerous. Nung binasa ko, dangerous pala yung ganong operation. Eh kasi nga, pipilitin mo, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin ng isang bagay. Mawawala yung talino mo talaga eh. No? Kung doktor ka, limbawa, biological expert ka, tapos meron kang PhD, may Nobel Prize ka, sasabihin mo, yung babae, hindi yung babae, lalaki yan. Yung lalaki, babae. Yun ang talino nila. Hindi ako sasama dun. 
Kasi kung nakapag-aral ako, hindi nga ako, engineering ako eh. Alam ko lang, makina makina konti. You know? Mga tubo-tubo, kurye-kuryente. Wala akong alam sa tao, pero ang alam ko, kaya magkaiba. Hindi mo yan pwede, kahit ano gawin mo, hindi mangyayari yun. Pero ginagawa ng mga matatali ng tao, pinaniniwalaan nila lahat yun. Isa lang ang sinasabi ng Bible. Kung yun lang, you will not stake. O, ano nangyari sa kanila? Ito na nga si Jesus. You know, the redemptive of work of Jesus Christ on the earth is proclamation and then the miracles. Minsan, papaliwanag ko sa inyo. Anong relasyon ng miracles? Sa proclamation. Kasi, dito nakita natin, iniwanan niya pareho. Ayaw maniwala ng Nazareth, iniwanan niya. Pumunta siya sa Kapernaum, yung mga tao, tinanggap siya. Pero iniwanan niya din kasi sabi niya, I need to go to the other city to proclaim. Kasi yung mga tao pumunta sa kanya para magpagaling lang eh. So, malis din siya doon kahit tinanggap siya. Because his major task is to proclaim the gospel. Ano yung gospel na yun? Sabi nga ni Jesus, Today, not today. Ito na fulfill na. Ay na expect niya maging grateful. Hindi yan basta basta sinasabi ni Jesus kanino man ha. Pero dito openly sinabi niya, pero tinanggihan siya. Kaya nga yung question, babalik tayo doon sa pagtatapos ko. Ano yung una sinabi niya? Who do men say that I am? Well, sabi ng mga Hudyo, ganito ka, sabi nila, Ganito ka. Pero may ikalawang tanong eh. Who do you say that I am? Yan yung tanong sa inyo. Yan pa rin yung application para sa kanila. Eto, sinabi ko sa inyo, sabi ni Luca. Pero, ikaw. Ito yung sabi ng iba. Sabi ng iba, either ang choice mo lang dito, una, Outrightly, nagsisinungaling si Jesus. Niluloko niya lahat ng mga tao doon. Pinagluloko niya, although may konti siyang kapangyarihan. Di ba, napaghinalaan nga siya na yung kapangyarihan niya galing sa Diablo. O pangalawa, deceive si Jesus. Di ba? Sabi niyo, pwede bang madeceive ang mga leader? Matatal? Oo. Oh, di ba? O yun nagsasabing siya, si, siya ang Diyos, anak ng Diyos. Pinaniniwalaan niya, siya yung anak ng Diyos. Either Jesus is deceived, self-deception na talagang ang isip niya siya si Kristo. Kaya nung pagpunta niya doon, sinabi niya, ako yan. Parang one day, sabihin ko sa inyo, eh, sa totoo lang, ako yun. Hindi eh. naman sila. Oh. Eh kung deceived din kayo, mananatili kayo sumusuporta pa rin sa akin. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Or, Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise. Tatlo lang choice niyo. Who do you say that I am? Do you need a Savior? Probably some of you, you don't need it. Because, Hindi ka naman masamang tao sa tingin mo eh. Only sinners will ever entertain Jesus. Yung pinag natin, you shall call His name Jesus for He will save His people from their sin. The claim of the New Testament is Jesus is the Savior of sinners. Pero kung ang tingin mo, hindi ka sinner, kasi mabuti ka naman sa ibang tao. Wala ka naman tinatapakan na ibang tao. Mag-isip ka mabuti. Doon ka pumunta sa first part ng law. Law 1, 2, 3, 4. Because there in that law, you will never be able to compare yourself and what you're doing with others. You stand before God and ask yourself, I am the Lord your God. Is that true sa buhay mo? 
o yung simpleng mahili kong tanungin. When you wake up, every morning that God gives you your life, do you live your life with reference to God? Ba? Hindi ka nagdi-devotion, hindi ka nag pray as a Christian para to please God. No. You'll never be able to please God. Only Christ was able to please God. Because I'm born again. You see? My life has changed. What has changed in my life? Salam. A true Christian is a man who has changed. And that change is evidence that he begins to live his life daily in the context of God. Diba? Ba't kayo nandito? Ang context, God. Pero kung iba yung context nyo, malamang siguro, eh, dahil hindi kayo believer. You have just followed a kind of religion that pleases you. There are many religions that can please men. But a person who had seen his sinfulness and called upon the Father in heaven through Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ had done, ang magiging epekto nun, sabi sa Bible, a changed life. And what is a changed life? This man, kung meron siyang changed life, will begin to live his life with reference to God and the will of God. Di ba? Nung hindi ako Christian, pakialam ko sa Diyos. Basta ang alam ko, nagsisimba ako tuwing linggo. Mas mabuti ako sa iba. Dahil ang family namin is practicing Catholic. Hindi kami nominal Catholic noon. Every night may devotion kami. Yun nga lang. You know, rosary, okay, may binabasang kong ano. Pero gabi-gabi yan. Pero during the other day, oba, hindi ko naisip ang Diyos. Naisip ko lang siya kung natatakot ako sa isang lugar. Di ba? Baka may mungu rito, baka may aswang dito. Nang panahon ko kasi, usong-usong. Yung bata ako, yun ang panakot sa amin eh. Baka maano ka ng duwende dyan, mga ganun. Yung bahay namin, may ilalim, hindi nga ako sumisilip eh. Sabi kasi ng parents ko, may duwende raw dito. Sisilip ko dyan, baka makakita ka ng duwende. Puro ganun. Di ba? Tanungin ko kayo, nung hindi kayo kristyano, how do you live? What is the reference point of the way you live? Now that you are a Christian, if you claim to be a Christian, what is the reference point of your life? Christ, my Lord and my Savior. There are times I need, I call upon Christ to save me. There are times when God, Son, will highly exalt His Lordship over me. And then I say, I will obey Lord. Because you are my Lord. There are times I'm in trouble, I call upon God to save me. To deliver me. Even as a Christian. But don't try to divorce Lordship with Christ being your Savior. You cannot do it. He is that. Our Lord and our Savior. And may God grant to each one of us that joy of knowing and relating to one who is our Savior and Lord, no other than the Savior of sinners, Jesus Christ Himself. Marami pong salamat muli, Panginoon, sa Ibanghelyong ipinagkalob mo sa amin sa umagang ito na nawa magbunga sa buhay ng bawat isa. Bigyan mo sila, Panginoon, ng spiritual knowledge, whether they are Christians or not fully or not yet. Be gracious. Be merciful, O Lord. And grant to each one who are here the joy of knowing you that though we are sinners, there is one 
capable and willing to deliver us from whatever sin that has remained in our life, sin that has enslaved us, O Lord. Give us that hope. Give us, Lord, that joy of knowing there is indeed one who really was able to do it as he promised because he is the Messiah. Hear us, we pray in his name. Amen.